So a problem we're going to face here is that um, we need to be able to tell, to provide errors here. Okay, let's say I don't type an answer here and I type one there. It should be able to tell me that there's something wrong with answer A or it doesn't meet the criteria that we want. So the issue is that we don't know the number of items that will be here. So as a result, we cannot go to our model. There is this model. Test model or questions model, sorry. We can't go here and try to... Um, actually, we can. Wait a second, wait a second. Okay. So here we are checking to see specifically what um, a specific thing here, for example. So we can as well check if any of the choices is set. So what I will do here is, let's see, uh, check for multiple. Oops, what am I doing? I ended up typing something else because of the prompt. So I will say check for multiple choice answers. So what we can do is loop through the data variable. So let's just say for, for each, yeah, mm -hmm. for each data as a key value. So we need both of those. So what we are looking for here is the choice. Now the problem is the keys in here are not very specific. So it's not like it's choice I can say if is set and then I check for choice uh, zero. What if it goes to choice 10 or choice 20? I can't know that. So instead of checking if this is set, what I would check for is the key. So I will say if key, um, so I can't be very specific like I said, so I'll use string string like this. So this is for looking for a specific string inside the um, inside this thing. So we can also use preg match. That way we uh, we can match a very specific string type. But let's just use string string here for now. I think that will work. So the haystack is the key. We are looking inside the key. And the needle is what we are looking for, which was choice like this. So if the key contains the word choice, then we know that this is one of those choices, whether it contains a number here or not, because the other will be numbers like zero, one. So it's going to go through all of them that have choice. That way we make sure that we go through all the choices. And then I'm going to now put uh, whatever checks I need here from this value because I know now that this is one of the choices. So if it's empty, then we have a problem. So I'm going to copy this and say, let me move this uh, back, back out like this. Okay. So if empty, and then that's value. So instead of all this, we just say value. If this value is empty, then we can throw an error on this one. So I'm going to copy this and do that. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to say this error is equal to, so here I will put choice like this. Even though there may be many errors, it's going to override that one and just put one of these. Now, if you want all the errors to show, let's say there are 10 choices and you want all the errors to show. For now, it's just going to show one at a time. When you say uh, save, it will remind you of the next one, etc, etc. I think that's a better idea. But if you want it to show you all of them, you have to number these. So you can do that by just making sure that in the loop we have uh, a moving number which we can just say num is equal to zero like this and then finally we say let me copy this and then we add it we add number here say number plus plus 
like so. That way we can use number if we want. Now we should be only we should only be incrementing it if we are um, here, I guess. Once we need to use it. So I'm just going to say copy and concatenate the number here like this. So that way it becomes choice zero, choice one as the item in the array. Or if you don't want to go through the hassle of adding numbers like this, just don't add anything in here, then it will be empty. It will just add to the end of the array, but this adding of choice one, choice zero is, is important if in here you want to add the errors on the inputs themselves. That way you will know that this input is choice zero, choice one, and then you can add the error right on it there. So it's just to give you more options if that's what you want. So I'll leave it there and say, please add a valid answer in choice. Um, hmm. So right here, uh, we don't know what this choice is. Is it A, B, C, D? Uh, we really have no idea. So what we can do is the same thing we did with our JavaScript is to create a variable like this. So I'll copy this and bring it back to this section here and I'm just going to add it right there. So instead of var, obviously we're going to put a dollar sign and say letters is equal to that and then I'll just check since um, num on the incre increments when we are about to use it. Actually the best is to move it after so that we can use the zero as well. So what we will do here is say letters and then get that letter. So we'll come here and say uh, in choice right here. Let's just concatenate with a dot and say letters, boom, and then say num, like a this. Okay, that should do. So let's come back here and refresh the page. Now, if I try to save this, so this is what I get. Please add a valid answer in choice A. Please add a valid answer in choice B. But let's say if we had three of them, C and D. Will it recognize those two? Save. So you see, it will say add valid in C and D as well. Let's see if I had added an answer in this one, in A. And yeah, let's save again. So please add a valid answer in choice A. Is that correct? Hello? Yeah, so it shows A, which is incorrect. And the reason is that because we are only doing when it's empty here. So we have a predicament here, which is not cool. So what we will do to solve this problem is just to move the num right here. That way it will increment for as long as we had put a choice. That way we will know exactly which choice we're talking about. So let's try and resend. So now it knows that it's B with a problem. So let me put an answer in B like this. It should say A, okay? Let me put an answer in A. It should now tell me B has the problem. And so it's working. That way, if I add several and just maybe select C and add an answer, it should tell me A, B, and D had a problem. Let's see, A, B, D. Okay, so that's good. The only problem is once we refresh the page, those guys are gone. You don't see those choices anymore, do you? No. So, um, what we need to do now is to make sure that those choices can be seen. So, how do we do this? Well, if I come back to here, inside this, we ought to do a loop in here. And we're just going to check to see if there is at least this item 
saved in the post because we know this is always there once somebody posts there. So I'm just going to put an if statement here, PHP tag, and I'll say if, okay, if is set, mm -hmm. post, right? And then, oops, what am I doing? Choice zero, like this. This tells me that this is not our first rodeo. It means we have refreshed, at least we have submitted the page once. So once we do that, we should no longer uh, rely on these default values. No, we have to do an else statement. So I will move this up here. Boom. Okay. Then I'll put an else here instead, like so. So what this means is that if there's a choice in there, it means we've submitted. So instead of putting these, we have to read from the post data. But then if we have this instead, then uh, it's the, uh, if we don't have this, it means we just show the default values. Okay. So if we have this, now we do a loop. So we're just going to copy exactly what is here. So I'm just going to do this, copy, and come down here, and I will paste this here. Uh, let's see. Okay, so of course we will need some PHP tags, and let's close them right about here. Okay, cool. So now we can do that for each loop. Now, instead of data, we have post. Okay, so we only care if the key has choice in it. And so we will paste this data right here. So I'll copy this and it will be right there because we are not, um, we are not here to Wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, so this is easy actually. We have to use the key here. So the name will be whatever the key is. So let's use some PHP. Actually, this is HTML here. So let me close my PHP tags and again, open them up. So now in the name, I can do the equal key like so. Okay, cool. But what about the letter here? So this is where the um, num will come in so that it can give us what we have here. So we start with a zero, so it is good. So that's letters. And then let's put this right here. So I want us to echo this out. So we will echo the num value. Letters num, like so. Mm -hmm because this is the number that we are on. So if it's zero, this is letter zero, which is A, just like that. But then the reason we are doing all this is so that we can, um, we can provide a value, no? So let's copy that value over here and then put a value, paste, close okay so let me see if that works at all so the only thing we don't we are not putting is this mm -hmm. we have to find a way to know which one is correct so instead of correct yeah this is correct answer right hmm this is going to be a tough one yes it will but let's see what we will do okay so let me refresh this and we are starting again. So let's say in B, I added an answer. So I'll say answer and let me submit. So it's saying A has no answer, but uh, looky there. This is not cool at all. Hmm. So why is it echoing this instead? Yeah. It should do this uh, if choice, 
yeah actually we don't need to check whether it's empty or not this is not our issue so out like that let's move this back a bit all right so and then what else here um am i missing something why was it showing some text there when it's not supposed to okay that's because here it added a bracket for some reason so refresh resend okay so at least we got what we wanted let me add one more and maybe c and d right let me put something in there's something in b and c let's see c answer right let's say this one is b answer and let's save so it's complaining that a and d have nothing which they don't a and d have nothing but we still have our answers in b and c the only problem now is this one if i select correct answer and save uh, it comes out as a non-starter so let's deal with this in the next video